Recently, I ventured into a canyon in the American Southwest, searching for a specific rock art panel left by the ancients. What I assumed would be a routine day of exploring became far, far more compelling when I discovered ancient steps carved into solid rock. Curious what was up there, I made the climb. What I found still baffles me today. Well, hey there, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. It's Andrew from Desert Drifter, of course. All right, here is the object of our mission today, this big canyon. Man, it's, uh, it's a little deeper than I expected. A couple pretty cool towers over here. I knew that somewhere in this area, there was a break in the cliff band that would allow me access to the canyon. Finding it took some trial and error. What is going on? Okay. <laughs> so if that thing ends, there's nothing no way. This is just kind of a, you don't want to fall zone. It's easy, but you don't want to fall. Thinking I had found the route, I began descending. Eventually though, I got cliffed out. Heading back up, I looked for other options. A little real life trial and error. Okay, turned into a little bit more of an adventure than I thought it would, but this for sure, I think third time is the charm here. Yeah, it gets a little tight under there. Up under here, check out these, uh, I think they're ripple marks in the sandstone here. I think they're from when this was laid down by water, you know, however many years ago. All right. Let's see here. It's not hard, it's just uh, awkward. Good thing for a durable backpack, huh? Whew, yeah, I think we are pretty cruiser from here on out. All right, we are down. Now in the canyon, I headed towards the first spot I had wanted to check out. There's the towers from another perspective. I came in sort of over in that corner. When I was dropping in, I could see this big alcove up here. And so that was kind of where I headed for my first stop. Take a look over here. I've wanted to see this site for a while. It's pretty cool to, to see it in person. It's, it's honestly more impressive than I thought it would be. So there's two things that really stand out to me uh, and make this thing really impressive. The first is the size. I guess the best thing I can do is just put my hand up close to it to give you a little bit of an idea. Now we never want to touch these things because um, the oils from our hands, you know, cause this paint to degrade and break down over time. So now stepping back, I mean, you can see, you know, my hand is just about the size of his foot. So then you look all the way up, I mean, that figure is a good, probably five to six feet tall. You've got the, the very obvious, you know, red paint, but do you guys see all the yellow that's around him? It's, it's kind of like, I don't know, like an aura around him. Look at his hand up there. There's six fingers coming off that. So this seems like it's something from the night sky. Comet, an asteroid, shooting star. You know, there's something different with this feet too. That left one, I don't, I don't really know what's going on there. This rock art would be classified as Barrier Canyon style. It's perhaps the most mysterious of all ancient Southwestern art. This particular panel is a very unique example of it. How old is it? Well, you'll see estimates ranging from 1,000 to 7,000 years old. Pretty big gap, huh? Attempts to use radiocarbon techniques to date this style haven't been very successful. 
hence the estimates being all over the place. I continued down the wall, finding a lot more, although much of it was very faded by time. So I climbed up a little bit higher, just kind of working my way along this, um, this cliff band. And I was given those two towers across the way, kind of a closer study. And I was like, gosh, that one on the right really looks like a face. And uh, I don't know how I missed it earlier, but there's like a little eye up there, you know, like a little natural arch. So I'm down along this alcove now. There's where I was looking for some shade. And there are a ton more of these like barrier canyon style figures. These ones are very hard to make out again. These ones a little bit more noticeable and then the very clear possible to miss is this guy down here. This is where things really get interesting. I pause in the shade to get the drone out take a closer look at the towers across the way. Maybe I've been staring at too much rock art, but I couldn't shake the thought that this one on the right has a very uncanny resemblance to bighorn sheep petroglyphs you'll see in this region. Here's a few examples from previous trips. Sure, it's not a perfect match, but you've got the snout, the neck, the eye. We'll revisit that in a bit. I started flying the drone back. From an aerial view, I could see there was quite a ledge above me. I had a flashback to a site I found months ago. It was another alcove. It had a ledge, and there was rock art on top of it. It blew my mind because of the difficulty of access. So for the heck of it, I started flying along this edge. You can imagine my astonishment when once again, I saw more ancient rock art on another dangerous ledge. Were my eyes playing tricks on me? Maybe it was natural coloration. What else was up there? And why was it there? Oh my gosh. This is, this is becoming a bit insane. And so after seeing that and being like, is that, you know, is that a figure up there? I came around to take a closer look at this, this like ramp that goes up. Take a look at this. So given the lighting on this right now, I don't think I would have noticed these to be honest, unless I had, you know, been looking for it. You see that like little dimple there and you follow it up. There's two more. There's a few more above it and a few more above it. And there at the top, you know, they sort of fade out. Um, and there's also, you know, I'm kind of just noticing it's like a different color sandstone. There are, you know, almost like on that inside, you know, I don't know if they're supposed to be more footholds, handholds or what, but they just seem too evenly spaced to be, to be accidental. Can I climb that? I have to take a look.
So here's my plan. If that was just like exposed slab, you know, I wouldn't do it because although none of it is necessarily hard in terms of rock climbing, I mean, that upper parts, maybe, I don't know, it's hard to say, maybe five, seven, five, eight. Um, so it's, it's not that it's like really hard elite climbing, um, but it's like, you mess it up, you're done for. So, um, you know, it's high consequence, very high consequence. Up there, I mean, you're probably 75 feet off the bottom. So, you know, you fall, it's a good night. But the reason I'm not bailing is you've got this huge crack that runs along it. So my thought is once it gets kind of sketch up in that region, what I think I'm at least going to attempt is to stick a leg in this crack and then using what climbers would call like off width technique, off width climbing, see if I can shimmy myself up on top to that ledge. And if I can't, you know, I'll bail. Um, you just gotta make good decisions up there, you know? But if the ancient ones could do it, I gotta admit, I wanna try. So I'm gonna try to prop the camera up down here um, because obviously I'm gonna need all my hands So I got into the, the crack a little below me, taking a little break. You know, you can kind of find these natural resting places. So here's a close up, like all of them look like they've been pecked in. Taking a little break, <laughs> it's hard work. So you can see it's pretty wide. So honestly, if it was a little less wide, it would be quite easy. Just wide enough, it makes it pretty hard work. Also a better climber would make this a lot easier too. So you see it's, it's kind of like there's these handholds chiseled Here's kind of the last little toe hold that I see. It definitely mellows in steepness, about maybe eight feet above me. Well, I'm a little bit stubborn. It was definitely not pretty, but we are up here. There's, there's my stuff, my backpack somewhere down there. Um, so let me show you guys the ledge. So up here now, I mean, I don't know, it's a good five feet wide or so. Let's see where that figure, oh, is this it right here? So everything is it's really hard to see up here because it's so faint. The figure is like right over here, probably looking at it through the drone's gonna be 
a better perspective, but I mean, looking at it up close, tricky to film. Um, there he is. That is clearly a figure. So those steps are clearly man-made. I mean, there's, there's zero doubt about that. Um, I mean, looking across the canyon, I mean, of course, these are the things that really tower above. I spent some time on the ledge, looking very closely at everything up there. I stopped at this large boulder. It was possible to get past it, but nothing seemed to be beyond it. The ledge also got significantly smaller from there and eventually tapered out altogether. Let me go ahead and down climb this. It's actually not going to be uh, as bad as you might think because I can kind of use just like canyoneering, um, like friction down climbing technique. So here's what I mean. You know, I'm just jamming my foot in there. So now that I'm on the ground, let's talk about this. What's going on here? Let's start by summarizing what we do know. This alcove, as well as the nearby walls, have a lot of rock art. Stylistically, most of it is probably from the late archaic time period, so conservatively, 1500 to 2500 years ago. Maybe older. There are steps, clearly made from stone tools, pecked into solid rock. Gaining access to this ledge seems important. Although faded, there is at least one clearly made Barrier Canyon style figure on the ledge. Across from all of this are two stone towers, one of which has an uncanny resemblance to a bighorn sheep, an animal revered by Native Americans for millennia. So what do I make of all this? Here are my thoughts. The most mundane explanation would be that the steps were made by some enterprising young warrior. You could imagine young men of the tribe climbing it to impress the ladies watching below. But I don't buy it, and here's why. The general belief is that rock art was very significant to these cultures. It held a revered status, and only certain people could create it for certain reasons. You didn't just give a kid some pigment and tell him to go keep himself busy for the afternoon. The sheer quantity and type of art in this specific area leads me to think there's a deeper meaning to it all. I do think these towers across the canyon have something to do with it. Exactly what, I don't know. I'll say it again, that one on the right is so unique. I mean, it looks like an animal. Was this tower some kind of a stone god that promised success on the hunt? Did the ledge serve as an altar, a place to leave offerings? But I think about the very unique figure below, who seems to have an astronomical object nearby. Is this a clue? Perhaps the towers create some kind of alignment with the night sky, or the sun, at a particular time of year. An astronomical calendar can't be ruled out, but would take significantly more study. What about the figure on the ledge? I couldn't help but notice he is perfectly framed in this vertical streak almost like he is being transported, up or down, from the heavens. Is this figure a clue? I wondered if he aligned with the large figure down below, so I checked with the drone. Close, but no. Is there more art up there than just this guy? Honestly, it was really hard to tell. 
There were so many very faint or faded areas that were just inconclusive. Here's a couple examples. They're interesting, but they don't have the clean lines this one does, or the obvious head and triangular shoulders. I'm guessing they're natural. With the drone, I also noticed this very faint triangular image. I was surprised I had missed it, but then realized it was in the vicinity of where I was transitioning from the crack to the face, so I was preoccupied. Is it the remains of another pictograph? Again, I think it's too hard to say. What do you see on the wall? Obviously, we can't rule out the fact that there could have been more art up there, and it's just disappeared with time. I sat at the bottom for a long time, considering these things. It made me wonder, what will people be asking about us in a couple thousand years? The more you find, the more you realize you don't know. The journey of discovery continues. Without answers, I started hiking back.